Hello and welcome to the Small Business Happy Dance podcast. I'm your host, Rachel, and today I'm interviewing Emma Cantillion from the barn at Lee's Farm. Hello and welcome, Emma. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Do you want to tell me a little bit about your business? Yeah, I can do that. So um, my name is Emma uh, Cantillion. I run the barn at Lee's Farm. Um, I have a couple of hats, really, under that umbrella. So um, I set up two holiday lets a number of years ago now, um, a yurt and a, an annex, which is attached to the barn, which I converted. We loved it up here so much that um, we decided we didn't want to move, so converted a barn instead. I'm based just opposite Bliss Hill, Victorian town, in the middle of the Ironbridge World Heritage um, site. So absolutely beautiful, very lucky. I have my little bubble at the top of the hill. Um, literally the neighbours, sorry for the pun, are the horses, the Shire horses that work over at the, um, at the museum. So they are the passing traffic. So yeah, two tons of Shire horse every morning. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. So yeah, that's it really. I have the holiday lets, but also um, I have worked for WIRE, so Women in Rural Enterprise, which is, I have to say, one of the reasons I am where I am today. And from my love of renovating my property and running my two holiday lets, I've recently started a consultation service. So I actually help people in a sustainable way um, rent out their space, really. So if anyone's got an empty space, whether that's a room or a field or an annex or an empty barn, then I can help you get from an empty space to a great income, really. So that's that's me. Oh my goodness. I I'm excited about the Shire horses. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know they're absolutely gorgeous animals. They're stunning. Is it two or is it a whole herd? It's <laughs> it's there's um the so Bliss Hill uh two work over there at one time. Um, but we have them they're on rotation so um, the person who owns the horses he has some and he does these shire horse lovely shire horse um, working days so experience days so at the moment we've got two lovely young ones we've got George um, and Edward I think or it could be Basil and Edward they're all they're all just lovely so um, they've been working over at the steampunk weekend this weekend. So it's been busy for them with all of the strange contraptions and everything else. But they're absolutely lovely. How did your business start, Emma? Well, I suppose what I found from working with lots of women in business over the last year is that uh, last few years is that there's often a reason behind women starting their own businesses. And that can be obviously the obvious work-life balance. Um, it can be that something big has happened in their life. So obviously inherently um, our personal lives do cross over into our business lives. Um, you know, I don't mean to make a sweeping statement, but with women, this is often more the case. More the case. Um, so basically what happened is I was um, a tra what's considered a trailing spouse for a number of years, moved back to um, here from France. Um, situations changed, let's put it that way, and um, absolutely loved where I lived up here. Um, and the house was my dream house, but it came with a derelict barn. Um, and so difficult decisions had to be made and myself and my kids decided we didn't want to move. So we decided to convert the barn. And I did that with an architect and a local builder. We loved every minute. We were very lucky that I suppose in a way that we could come on site every day. So the kids got very involved with what was going on and where their bedrooms were going to be. And as we were building, I sort of decided that we didn't need all of the space that was going to um, be there for us when it was finished. So I made a few quick changes with the architect and that's where the annex happened. So we decided, I decided then that I'd either rent it out as an office space or uh, something like that, but decided to do holiday lets. And then started the holiday let there, having done the um, conversion, it came a bit later. Um, with the help of some amazing 
women who I met, uh, who we do um, a masterminding group with, and they sort of helped me and supported me through all of this. Um, and then looked at the space I had outside and decided that was a little bit too much to handle as well. So popped the yurt at the end and I'd had um, a yurt for a birthday party, my 40th, because I'm a January baby and decided to have a Chronicles of Narnia party as it was going to be cold anyway, and hired a yurt um, and did that as Mr. Tumnus's lair um, with sofas and everything else in and the yurt makers local. So um, the yurt is actually made from timber from the local area and it's made about 10 minutes up the road. So yes, we have a yurt maker in, uh, in Shropshire. <laughs> you learn something new every day. I definitely didn't know there was a yurt yeah. maker in Shropshire. That's amazing. Really? <laughs> Wow. And if you're listening on the podcast and not watching this, I will insert some pictures and video. And if you head over to Emma's Instagram, you'll be able to see them as well. Um, I'll put some pictures in of the year and possibly of the horses. Um, so you can go and see those and see what Emma's talking about. But going back to the building of the annex, you did it in quite a sustainable way, didn't you? Yeah. So again, um, I've been very lucky. So being eco-friendly uh, has always been something that I've been passionate about. Um, I actually worked in injection moulding in a previous life for the automotive industry and way back when ISO 14001, sorry boring techie uh, reference, came in and it was it was quite a new thing and it was how to make sure that everything that you were doing within the situation were, uh, that you were in was um, more environmentally friendly um, things like that and it sort of really sparked an interest um, um, many years ago now so 20 years ago when I did it um, and it really did spark an interest in trying to be more environmentally friendly but sustainability is is different so um, what I've actually done I was in a great position to be able to look into what I could do to make the annex and the barn more eco-friendly more sustainable so yes I used um, as much as I could of all of the original materials. So we basically the derelict annex was take what was left was taken down brick by brick and tile by tile um, and reused. The same with the barn, anything that came out went back in. So um, there are beams in here which aren't actually doing anything, but um, they've stayed. So the inside and the outside of the barn and the annex looks like they would have done when they were originally built. Um, yeah, and I've got uh, air source heat pump and uh, rainwater harvesters and all of those sorts of things, which I was in a fortunate position to start doing sewage treatment plants. So it's grey water there um, if I wanted to use that. So, yes, I was very lucky. So as environmentally friendly and sustainable as possible. Wow. And at the moment, sustainability is such a big, it's such a hot topic. And yeah. combining that with, um, you know, um, accommodation and uh, that's such a big deal at the moment, isn't it? To make accommodation more sustainable and travel yeah. more eco-friendly. Yeah. People are becoming more aware of these things. They're basing yeah. their purchasing decisions on sustainability and eco-friendly yeah. brands. So yeah. this is the moment. So in terms of with your consulting work, do you cover that as well, sustainability for those? Yeah, businesses? it will definitely be a priority because we've obviously got the targets in 2030. Shropshire and Telford and Rekin are actually really quite proactive as far as um, change goes towards the zero carbon targets um, so that's that's really good but we need to do it because retrofitting anything is more expensive and actually if as a business small business large business tourism hospitality if you can start doing it now and you can make those changes slowly it's actually far more makes far more business sense than to get to the stage where you actually have to do it because it's going to get to a stage where we're not meeting our targets globally and nationally and we're going to be forced to do things you're going to have to do it and that is when prices will skyrocket so you might as well it makes really good business sense as well as really good environmental and sustainability sense for where we're living so do you give consulting to businesses that are currently, you know, currently uh, 
selling accommodation as well as new businesses so could somebody get a consultation if they've already got an airbnb suite yeah. so um i have done uh, a number of properties now one of them i just do on a, a sort of a an intermittent basis so he, he pays an hourly rate so if an issue comes up or he wants to make a change or has a question um, about what he can do going forward so he's got some land in different places um, and it's like could he use his land within his um, property he's also got a bit of land separately so how could he use that I can actually help with things because I've done this myself um, you know I, I'm practical with it as well I'm not going to say you have to do this because we've got net zero, it has to be practical, you have to be able to, it has to be achievable. Okay, so we've all got budgets, we're all time poor, and nobody is expecting everybody to do everything straight away. But I can certainly say, well, I've got a composting loo, and so this is how it works. And actually, I've got the grid, it's, the, the um, year is completely off grid. So this is how I get over problems such as power and water supply and showers um so and actually it makes for a very romantic evening doesn't it having fairy lights and open fires i had a couple get engaged this weekend um in the yurt so that's my that's my fifth uh the fifth proposal that's happened in the yurt since i started so that's really lovely and i couldn't even give them a cuddle but there you go i blew them kisses <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, story <laughs> off that was off tangent <laughs> but, but yes yeah, so I can actually help from start to finish so if somebody just wants to come and say how can I make it more sustainable then yes I can certainly give people a hand what I would what I really love doing is the is the consultation where I go in and it's a blank space I mean that is that's the easiest way to do it but there are lots of ways we can make things <clears throat> make our accommodation um, more green more friendly so I love the story about the engagement <laughs> and you're right yeah. it is it can be a very romantic setting if it's all candle lit and yeah. open fires and yeah rugs on the sustainably, floor sustainably sustainably sourced local wood though kill dry <laughs> <laughs> It's all those things you see. That's the difference between being green and being sustainable. So um, oh, lovely. Well, it just yeah. sounds. I can't wait to for everyone to have a little look at um, the barn because I think it's just going to be. You're going to love it. You're going to want to stay <laughs> there. So how did um, so how did COVID affect the business? There was no business basically, Rachel. <laughs> so um, we can't really say that it didn't affect the business. Yeah, I was kind of gutted, but also I um, chose that time to work on the business. So um, I was able to reflect on what was gonna happen coming out of it. Obviously, um, during that time, I learned, I did all of the um, enhanced cleaning. I looked at risk assessments, did all those business things. So that when we came out of lockdown, I was able to sort of hit the ground running. I am forever grateful for where I live because it's it's a little bubble. I have so much to do all the time up here that for me, and I know I'm quite unusual, I needed, I didn't realise, but I needed that time. I have been working flat out on my business um, and working as well for the last few years that I just actually was able to use the time to do all those jobs that I can't do because all my lovely guests are staying. So it was really hard, the first one, um, but I was 100% almost occupancy in the short um, time that we were out of lockdown um, between July and November last year. And I have been full since we came out of lockdown in April. So I have literally... 96% occupancy now until the end of August. So every day is booked. I think I've got two nights um, free <laughs> in the yurt um, and that's it. And September's starting to book up. And I think people are just really grateful to be able to come out and be somewhere away from everything else. So yeah, I mean, I think 
I, I'm not saying it was a mindset ish thing. It's 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 it was a mindset thing for me personally. I chose to use that time, so I changed how people access the accommodation. So they used to come in behind and walk past um, the barn. Um, now they actually come in through the back. So I hired a digger for the day and a driver. I didn't do the digging myself, although I would have loved to, I just didn't have the time. Um, so we created a whole new entrance and I decided to, I had a very small pond, so I decided to extend the pond. So now it's a wildlife area. Um, and I completely re rewilded the area between the annex and the yurt. So you can hardly see the yurt now because it's got um, willow and it's got the pond and the meadow grasses. So, yeah, I sort of used the time to just make it, um, yeah, I suppose, more green, um, rewilding and also sort of a just a, a safer way for people to to sort of arrive and check in, I suppose, because at the back of your mind, whenever you do anything, when you've got accommodation, it's those first impressions when people walk. So yeah, there are weeds and I'm really highly critical of my own space, um, as everybody is, I suppose, of their own business, but um, feedback's quite good. So I'm not gonna <laughs> dwell on the weeds too much. No, and you're not the first person I've spoken to who, um, had a small business interestingly the podcast I filmed last week um she did the Charlotte said the same she said she spent that time like really refocusing she actually pivoted her business towards something that she wanted to do more of so Emma you're part of the Young Enterprise Shropshire do you want to tell me a little bit about what that involves yeah um well when I was at school <laughs> again many moons ago I was very lucky to do, um, my school was very proactive, it was a girls school and we did lots and lots of things like interview um, training and um, we also had the opportunity to do Young Enterprise and I did that so um, I'm an alumni really of Young Enterprise and the opportunity came up, I went to a presentation evening for Young Enterprise and I actually got really emotional because all of these amazing students these young adults who are sort of between the ages of 14 and 18 were setting up their own businesses and they basically they start in September and by April May they've had to have set up a new business they have to come up with a product they have to come up with their you know who's going to be MD who's going to be finance director who's going to be operations director who's going to do admin and HR they have to start doing minutes of meetings and um, sending out agendas, find a company name, set up company business accounts, bank accounts. And it's just absolutely amazing. And by April, they have to have done a company report, two trade, two or between two and four trade fairs in Telford and Shropshire in the big shopping centres with a product. They have to present in front of their peers, like 270 people, and have Dragon's Den interviews and all sorts of things and it's just it's just amazing and it really I just I was watching them and I felt quite emotional and thought you know what this is every school should be doing that you know we teach them in schools history all sorts of amazing subjects and we need to do that but what we don't do is prepare them for real life in a way so by doing all of this by doing young enterprise and it's elective they can choose to do young enterprise they don't have to and um i just think it's so invaluable it's great for their cvs i love doing it and obviously i had just been through um a divorce <laughs> and had gone straight into setting up my own business and i just wanted to give something back really so yeah, I joined Newport Girls High School six years ago as their business advisor. So I, um, I think I'm just about to go into my seventh year actually there. Um, and I absolutely love it. I get two or three businesses a year. Um, I go in once a week, COVID permitting. We still did it, bless them. They still ran businesses through COVID. We did all of our meetings via Zoom or Teams, lots of emails, they're setting up Instagram and Facebook accounts, websites, online shops, they're doing all of this. 
and I just I'm just always so proud of them um, and they've missed the last two years they've missed, missed their presentation evenings but yeah I've just joined the um, the board for Shropshire Young Enterprise so I'm now on the board on that on the condition that I can still go into the school and still be a business advisor so <laughs> if I'd have had to have chosen between being a business advisor or being on the board I'd have found it very difficult because I still love going in and working with them so it's just fantastic I love it so anyone out there who thinks that they would like to do young enterprise you should do it it's like an hour two hours a week it's so, so rewarding so Emma <clears throat> as you are uh, give advice to people who are setting up their businesses what one piece of advice would you give to any new business who is watching this or someone thinking about setting up delegate no seriously I think I've worked with lots of businesses um, through my time at wire and I think the one thing is is when you're setting up a new business as on your own um, the thought is that you have to do everything for yourself and you, you're so you're so in your business that you think you have to do everything and you can't possibly give anything away. Um, you know, it sort of becomes your like literally everything, doesn't it, when you're setting it up. And I just think it's a bit, I mean, a lot of people don't like this, but I quite like doing a SWOT analysis, which is your strengths, weaknesses, um, you know, threats, and what's the other one? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's quite good to do a personal one of these for your for your yourself. And then from doing that, then do a business one. Because what it actually does is it makes you realize that, that, that your own weaknesses. I mean, we're talking we were talking about maths, but very early on, I mean, it's only now, probably after four years, that I do need my accountant to do my self-assessment. Three years ago, I literally was the one thing that was panicking me was having to do self-assessments. But honestly, why would I not set up a business just because I was fearing self-assessments? So I just got myself an accountant. And each year, we've just extended the things that she does for me. And she hands a few things back. So now she's, you know, got a spreadsheet, which I don't like spreadsheet, but she, you know, I can keep on top of it now. So but that was one thing that I knew that was going to sit on my shoulders and give me so much anxiety that, you know, that's so that's what I do. I, I have an accountant. I don't like washing. So I now take my stuff to the laundrette or the bedding. I don't feel like I have to do everything myself. There are things I don't like. And if I'm going to run a business, I should be able to do the things in the business that I love doing. I need, you work on your strengths, don't you? My strengths are hospitality, the setting, making it all look lovely, greeting um, with my accommodation. And when I'm helping people, it's getting them with their businesses. It's helping them to realize that, you know, you're in tourism now. So get to know your local area. You have an opportunity to take on your eco green tourism so do that so yeah I would say learn what your strengths and weaknesses are stick to your strengths and if you can find anyone even I've done a lot of bartering over the years where I've done stuff and I've there's been a one night stay and somebody while they've been here has helped in the garden so I have a really good friend and she's a, a uh, she's a garden designer and when I very first opened the annex, she needed to get away. She came and stayed in the annex to help me to see what I'd missed, anything that was annoying in the annex and the way I'd laid it out, decorated it. And while she was here, I sort of ran through like she was going to be a, a guest. And she was she was a guest, obviously. But at the same time, she helped me plant the garden so that the garden that the people that the guests are going to use was OK. So use the people around you just get support don't feel like you have to do everything yourself I mean ask for help. it's interesting because this isn't the first time this has come up in the podcast and um interestingly I outsourced my accountancy stuff yeah. I, I mean I have done it before um but 
I I have left it to the last minute and I got very, very stressed. And also because I was moving house, a lot of the um, rent, rent letting agents wanted mm-hmm. me to have an accountant. So um, it sort of solved two issues for me. I actually need to go in and double check my self-assessment. This is just a reminder for me. Mm-hmm. Go in and check your self-assessment because my accountant has actually done that for me. By the way, the O is opportunities. That's so it. it. Under under pressure there. <laughs> Remember. Well, I love the idea of doing a personal one yeah. versus a business one because there are different opportunities. You know, I can imagine that's going to look really. I might go off and do that later. Actually, I yeah, think I just think it's thing. you know, and wh- whichever whatever situation you get into, almost was like I'm going to do this. Do I go? Do I close my business for three months and go traveling, or whatever you do, you can still you can do a SWOT analysis. I mean, you don't have to sort of do it right down to the letter, but even just knowing those few things, um, opportunities and threats really are the main the main ones, aren't they? So, um, but yeah, it's just, it's something I like and it's a tool that not a lot of people like, but again, I do that with the Young Enterprise. I get them to do a SWOT analysis, so yeah. But it can be interesting to look at, I, I like it as a tool because my background is a project manager so you would yeah. you know use it in that in terms of that but I like it for the business and I have done it a couple of times for the business but I like the idea of doing it for the person because yeah. <laughs> although I imagine the weaknesses areas are going to be interesting yeah. but there you go yeah. um weakness you she know, talks too much <laughs> yeah. but with like the young enterprise these so say you've got a business a team um they've got eight or nine people in their business if they all do a personal SWOT analysis, that is like the first step for them and share it. That's the first step for them all being able to understand how each other works. So there's no point in putting somebody who's afraid of standing up and speaking or um, you know, interacting with board members of the young enterprise and stuff like that if they're, if they're shy. They need to be the person maybe who's doing HR or, you know, it just it, it just makes a lot of sense to do a personal one for me, honestly. <laughs> um, and is there any piece of advice you would give to customers of small businesses? Yes. <laughs> Try not to bargain with prices. Because it's like, again, we have this thing. It's, it is, it's, it's it's be a good human really (laughs) you know we don't have the support of a HR team or um, you know legal or anything like that and all we want to do is to provide a good service or a good product Um, so it's just you know good manners (laughs) it's just (laughs) as a customer I, d- I just think good manners is if you can be a good human and good manners it's great and just support small businesses whether that's online or locally that's sustainability and it might not even just be the product or service that you see at the front it might be that person has done a lot of training in that area they also yeah. doing all the social media the marketing uh you yeah. know potentially hiring staff and all the hr yeah. and as i say keeping the books you know so the, the 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 front door doesn't always show you everything that's going on the behind yeah. the scenes is all often yeah. a lot of energy and time that has gone into you know yeah. getting to that point including networking which yeah. brings us nicely segued mm-hmm. into wire which is women in yeah. rural enterprise do you want to talk a little bit about that because that that's how I that's how I met you yeah Wire. yeah well I honestly wouldn't be here without wire I honestly say that now because um when my situation changed and I was trying to decide what to do um an opportunity came up to go and work for wire hosting some training um and I met so many amazing women um through doing that it was a broadband challenge so it was training Um, people on things like Instagram Facebook all of these different things and I was hosting the sessions and then there would be so I was facilitating but then there would be a tutor or somebody presenting and doing the training Um, and then from that there was also um, a couple of other um, training sessions and this is where I so Polly who runs Wire said to me Emma you know why don't you actually do 
um, the training. So we did an IGRO and that's where my masterminding groups come from. And I honestly, without the support of WIRE and the WIRE network and working for WIRE, I don't think I would be here. I don't think I'd be where I am now. So just the support across the board from people I've never met, um, just from being on Facebook pages, from you know, um, chatting to members on the phone when I was in the office, finding out what they did. So, you know, my um, my insurance, uh, you know, my accountant, um, my group of masterminding ladies who monthly give me a kick up the backside are, you know, they're, they're all wire. I met them all through wire. So I just think it's very supportive. It's, yeah, it's a great network, a really great network. And I remember I spoke to you on the phone and you were so enthusiastic. I was like, I'm in, let me pay the money. <laughs> How do I get it to you? And then I think Polly must have emailed me because I'd emailed the generic email. I said, Polly, she's done a great job. <laughs> Emma's convinced me. I'm ready. I'm signed up. I'm, I'm attending a meeting in a day. Emma, do you host any events at the barn? Um, so I don't usually host any events just because I'm so busy, which I'm not complaining about. But um, recently I've been um, working, I've done a couple of workshops with Shropshire Zero, uh, so Zero Carbon Shropshire. Um, and out of that, they've actually decided this year to run Shropshire Love Nature Festival, um, which is part of Zero Carbon Shropshire and Shropshire Wildlife Trust. And they are asking for people, it doesn't matter if you are a member of the public, a business, um, to sort of hold events. And so I decided to do, it's, it runs for a month and it's all over Shropshire and Telford Reekin. And I've decided that I'm going to do um, open the garden because basically, I think I said to you earlier, I've rewilded it and any plants that I'm putting in are native plants. And I've made this pond, which was like a, from a little puddle. It's now about nine foot by nine foot. It might, might even be bigger than that, actually. What I'm actually doing is I've recently had to have all of the ash trees taken down from um, around here because of the ash dieback. And what I've actually done, they've done for me is all the branches they've cut and left. Um, so what I thought might be quite nice to do is in one area of my wildlife garden, I'm going to almost make these obelisks using a lot of the ash trees that have been cut down. So I'm going to sink them in. And then people who come up, we're going to make some um, insect bug trees. So a lot of bees and things like that, as you know, are endangered. Um, and it isn't just the big swarms of bees you see, but lots of solitary bees and they quite often find holes in trees so I thought it might be quite a nice idea when people come up is to um, drill into these little into these tree trunks that have been taken down and create like these obelisks which are actually bug insect hotels so and then they will be able to write um, their names above each little um, hole that they've drilled and I'll basically have this sort of section of ash tree trunks which have all been drilled and I'm hoping I mean the pond is obviously in very early stages um, but I'm hoping that there'll be a few things that they can have a look and I've I've sort of got lots of naturally lying um, tree trunks and things for people to lift and bricks and some of the stuff that's just fallen down when the barn was here that I've just left um, so people will be able to have a little bit of an insect spot and a bug hunt when they're up here. The Shropshire Love Nature Festival has a, has a Facebook page and all the events, they're everywhere. So Fort Hall Farm, there's a couple here, um, the Shropshire Wildlife Trust. I'm also hoping to be able to give away some um, wildflower seeds. I will put the links in the description. So if you are in the Shropshire area and you fancy uh, attending, uh, you will be able to find all the information in the description below. And that's happening in September, isn't it? Yeah, I think there's one at the end of August and one at the beginning of September. Is there anything else you want to cover, Emma? Well, Definitely. thank you, Emma. And I will leave, as I say, all the links in the description below. So if you're interested in WIRE and the young, uh, the young People's Enterprise, in Emma's awesome yurt and annex <laughs> i'll leave everything in the description thank you so much emma for spending oh you're very welcome Bye. it's been a brilliant to speak to you thank you for listening to the small business happy dance i will see you next week <laughs>